My dear friends, welcome to Chess24. Uh, my name is Rustam Kasimjanov and we are continuing our series about Jose Raul Capablanca, third world champion, and today we have a special guest, uh, Grandmaster from Spain, uh, Francisco Vallejo Pons, or as the whole chess world knows him, Paco. Welcome, Paco. Thank you. So, how are you today? Well, not bad. Are you ready to show us some tricks and to give us some wisdom? Well, I, w I expected you to do that. Well, I'll try, yeah. I'll and try. maybe you can help a little bit, yeah? Once yeah. you're here anyway. Yeah. Uh, this is the game, um, Capablanca, uh, Milner, Berry. And I chose this game because I thought it is quite instructive in a way uh, Capablanca uh, used uh, his two bishop advantage. Well, at the moment he has, uh, well, no two bishop advantage yet, but in fact he played knight e4 in this position, creating a threat of um, knight f6. And uh, basically, um, he is uh, uh, planning to get the two bishops, and we'll see how uh, this uh, advantage will uh, come to show in this game. Um, and to understand um, two bishops, it is important to realize that um, although the position is not very open now, it can get um, uh, open very quickly, and we will see how Capablanca goes about this. So. In this position, I personally, with black, I would be worried about knight f6, but in fact, king g7 doesn't seem to work well because after d4, uh, white begins to open um, the diagonal against the black king. Looks dangerous, yes. Looks mm -hmm. pretty dangerous, yes. And the um, normal move would be uh, bishop g7, mm -hmm. but as a matter of fact, uh, Milne Berry played bishop f8 um, pretty recently in this game. <laughs> and. Uh, so he felt uh, not so good about it. Well, he didn't feel good about this, yeah. And I have a feeling that in general Milner Berry was uh, a bit worried about the pawn on d6, yeah. After, for instance, b5, uh, the pawn will be hanging and he would have to go c5. But in fact, this is maybe not as bad as what he got in the game. Yeah, it looks not so bad. Uh, quite solid, at least. Eh? It is, at least it's closed, yeah, it's closed, for a while. Yeah. Uh, but in fact, he played f5. Um, basically asking for knight f6. Yeah, he gave the bishops. Yeah. He gave the bishops and uh, furthermore his king became pretty vulnerable now. Uh, because, uh, okay, this uh, advance f5 is good when you can attack, but now clearly this is not the case. It's not gonna help him very much. It's not gonna help him, yeah. I mean, for now it looks like he's controlling many squares. Uh, like in the center, all his pawns are controlling squares, but this will uh, change when the position will open. Yeah, and now it's interesting to see how slowly and quietly Capablanca uh, tries to open the position. First of all, he played bishop c3. He's um, thinking about the pawn on e5 and trying to maybe get something going with c5 or d4 or maybe even f4 sometimes. Mm -hmm. Black plays bishop g7, and queen b2 becomes understandable for the same reason now. He's preparing some sort of pressure on the pawn on e5. His other point could be that sometimes maybe b5 could create the pressure along oh. the b-file and on the pawns. Well, he's basically, basically not threatening much, but uh, well, trying to... Oh. Scared the other guy probably. Well, <laughs> but also improving his pieces a little bit, yeah. yeah, just bit by bit, and also. Well, d6 is not a, it's not a weakness anymore, so he brings the queen back, yeah, like the, to the to b2. Right? Yeah, but and also maybe importantly, maybe black actually wanted to go d5. Uh -huh. Yeah. To be able maybe to go d4 and maybe to close at least some diagonals potentially. Yeah, or even d5 e4. To maybe change d5 the e4. Yeah. So, so. so in yeah. fact, maybe queen b2 is a very good prophylactic move. He's continuing. Mm -hmm. uh, to feel that e5 is an important square in the position and uh, uh, kind of paralyzes black a little bit. And g5 trying to open lines or something for black? Well, I mean, maybe he should try something desperate like well, this. Now, yeah. now the king is on f7 already, the rook h8, uh, I would like to play like that with black, no? maybe it's a dream, yeah, but... Uh, well, maybe maybe you should, yeah. I don't. It sounds actually like a good try, yeah. Well, at Get least I mean, if you're going to die, at least try try something first. Yeah, yeah and I, I think maybe Milner Berry did not feel like he was dying yet. Oh, okay. okay. And okay, he made a move which is um, 
looking unnatural to my eye. I mean, I would. Uh, it's nice that you played g5 because I wanted to go king g8 the first time I saw this position. <laughs> we you don't know, have the same don't approach. Don't have the same approach. Yeah, I wanted to hide the king. And uh, then maybe Capablanca would play something like rook d1, maybe slowly preparing some d4. But uh, okay, the position is still uh, not very clear. And um, I think Milner Berry played uh, a little bit uh, too academically. Yeah? He thought Capablanca is putting pressure on the pawn on e5, and he decided to give it another. Yeah, but protection. it's strange to put the, the, the queen. It's in almost front always of the wrong, yeah? It's strange. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, the, the queen is vulnerable to all sorts of tricks. Yeah. Uh, one of these tricks could be b5, another one could be d4, d5. You uh, never know when, but uh, sometimes it happens that the queen in front of the rook it's not a it's good just not a good thing yeah uh, not a good thing and now in fact um, immediately Cavablanca uh, started to open the position with d4 and usually after d4 you could come e4 but now now d5 yeah. is losing uh, a piece uh, ex exactly because uh, black placed the queen on c7 otherwise he would just take take and take, and take, but now bishop g7 actually would win the piece because the queen is hanging. And uh, because of this, um, white played d4 for free, and um, he's continuing to uh, threaten things like d5 and c5 and other things. Um, Black made another very defensive move, played knight f8, and in fact now white just took on e5. Uh, because, um, okay, white has to open some diagonals. And um, the thing is, if black tries to keep it closed with d takes e5, then after e4, say knight e6, c5, it's clear that the position will open very quickly. Yeah. And this bishop will come to life either via h3 or will come to life on this diagonal. White is also threatening some h5. Queen b3, maybe. Yeah, rook is coming uh, to d1, queen b3, and in general, uh, as the bishop start opening up, the position immediately turns from reasonably unclear to very, very bad for black. This is uh, the illustration of the power of the bishops. When, they, uh, when the diagonals are open, then the bishops become um, devastating. Uh, black uh, tried bishop takes e5. Well, the attempt is to exchange the bishop. Yeah, very understandable. And uh, Cavablanca had to foresee that he can stop this. Was knight d4. Black is playing without plan somehow. He's just moving pieces. That is true, the, yeah. the, the last few moves, it looks to me like he didn't. He's not really trying something. No? That's why I liked g5, for example. I mean, well, maybe it's a bad move or something, but at least you have an idea eh, behind. Well, eh? Capablanca yeah. always said himself, it's better to have a bad plan than no plan yeah. at all. Yeah, and it seems that Milneberry in this game didn't have a yeah, plan. He's just making moves, okay, trying to not to blunder anything. That's a very good plan. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, and again, yeah, after knight d4, white uh, is threatening some c5, and then again to hit the bishop somehow, yeah, with some tactical means. And again, Milneberry tries to defend on um, e5, but basically, as you said, the whole game he's trying to, to protect, protect against one move threats, yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, knight d7, now white uh, hitting once again with. Yes. His rooks as e4. well, I mean, the rooks on b8, uh, b8, c8. And also the queen on c7, basically. It's, it's completely playing, misplaced. No. Playing without a plan kind of has its consequences. And, uh, okay, now it's, uh, the diagonals uh, are opening and white is uh, coming to the king on f7. And now I think black's position is basically lost. I mean, uh, I think he should have still maybe tried something like f4. Uh, but in fact here, I mean, some blows and uh, okay, white just gets to the uh, uh, to the king after the queen e6 and basically black is not going to survive this and um, i uh, chose this game despite the fact that it's a pretty simple game because of uh, what followed yeah uh, just the position after bishop takes d4 bishop d4 knight e5 i mean to a, to a grandmaster right it's clear that black is very very bad in this position uh, but in fact the Material uh, balance uh, is still there. Black has two knights for two bishops, and uh, um, nothing much apparently wrong with his position. But in fact, uh, in this kind of positions, two bishops are just so much stronger than 
And the nice that the black um, also some space, chance. maybe. No? Also some space. Also there. some space, and also the bad king. Yeah, the I bad mean king, the, the yeah. king is completely safe. Yes. Then black would have it's chances. Not only the bishops, but some small other details. Also. Oh, that's true. Yeah, and but it's interesting that now uh, Capablanca did not even need to do anything special to win this. Yeah, without any tactics, uh, without just <laughs> just some normal moves. Yeah, he um, attacked once. Mm -hmm. uh, black uh, tried some f takes e4, bishop e4, knight f5. Now, okay, the trick, bishop takes f5, knight f3, normally does not work against all champions, <laughs> with some exception. But uh, it shouldn't normally work, but uh, Kablanka well, just played bishop a1. But there is always a way to to lose a game in chess. I mean, this is good that people know, so, like, I mean, you can dominate the game completely. Any position can be lost in yeah, that yeah. well, we, everybody probably knows by now. But From bitter experience. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we learn on our own examples, yeah, more than yeah, on some others, yeah. <laughs> it's nice watching, yeah, when people blunder, but when we do ourselves... It kind of hurts, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then now after bishop a1, I would like to attract your attention to the fact that um, uh, black has uh, reasonably well-positioned knights, uh, protected by pawns. And in this case, um, uh, the black's tra tragedy is that white is so active that he can undermine uh, black's knights yeah. with uh, pawns, and knights become very vulnerable if they are not protected by pawns, especially against bishops. And uh, in this case, um, yeah, black finally um, tried to do something about his rooks, bringing them somehow to defense of the king. Black played rook g8, h5, rook f8, and now clearly white uh, can try to win with many uh, ways, but what Kavlanka did is very instructive. After Undermining the position of one knight, he um, played c5, doing the same uh, yeah, to yeah. the other black knight. And now basically both of the knights, uh, uh, despite being in the center and controlling a lot of squares, they need protection. And against bishops this simply uh, does not work. And Maybe with the king on b8 it will still be a playable position, no? somehow trying to fight at least with Well, yeah, with black, the king yeah? would be safe, yeah. With the, king, with the king on b8 it will be a different story, but with the king in the middle of the action... That's true, yeah. It's, yeah, it's going to be difficult. And that's exactly how the game ended. Yeah, Emil Naberi tried b5, but now just Kavablanka played bishop takes d5, and uh, the direct attack uh, decided the battle. So c takes d5, and uh, after f4, black soon had to resign because uh, he, the pin uh, is uh, winning back the material and the white's attack continues and basically black resigned. And I chose this game uh, despite it being uh, completely straightforward because it indicates the kind of dangers that could be in positions like this with um, two bishops and uh, the bad king and also because uh, Capablanca in my opinion um, very quietly, uh, very um, knowingly utilized the advantage of uh, his two bishops. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's true that he played very slowly. Somehow, I, I, well, with my own style, normally I hurry up to collect something. You know? Like uh, when he had this position, I'll probably try to find some tactics. But Capablanca did it in a very easy way somehow. Yeah, it's like he knew he, what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> it was, well, normally I try to calculate, and but then you actually realize that some people doesn't calculate so much, but they don't need to. They just improve their pieces and so uh, they yeah. calculate only when, when it, there is a real reason yeah, to do it. Yeah? Only once in this game, yeah, bishop takes d5. Yeah. And but it's a two-move calculation even. Yeah, ah, so but uh, on the whole, a pretty impressive uh, performance by Capablanca and uh, interestingly, I think uh, uh, his win actually started somewhere around here and he felt... After queen c7, really the problems became Unpleasant, I think. Yeah, after queen c7, d4. Yeah, yeah because black lost harmony. Yeah, yeah. You should, you should still have here. Maybe it's still not so bad. Yeah? Well, I think g5 would have been a much more unpleasant. Uh, well, at least way. At least this is modern chess somehow. No? People doesn't want to to defend this this passive positions. Yeah? Oh, that's People, true, yeah. when when you feel that you're getting a bad position, you just go crazy. Eh? You play g5 and, well, who knows it? I mean, you're objectively worse, but, well, I mean, during the game, this was, well, I mean, not in the defense, but also in the attack, what Tao was doing all the time. Eh? 
Like he was just, well, after the analysis, uh, you could say, well, he was wrong maybe. But during the game, it's very hard to find sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, That's true. Now, you see, uh, not only did we um, show you something about two bishops, but also uh, Paco produced some very useful insights about counterplay and modern <laughs> chess, yeah? I think if you stay with us uh, in our next videos, we will uh, show you uh, some uh, more chess knowledge on uh, the examples of uh, the great uh, world champion uh, from Cuba, Jose Raul Capablanca. Stay with us. Bye. Thanks.